Hi, my name is Annie, Annie Titus, for a proper introduction. And uh, my site, uh, website, blogging site, queerbeliever.com has a number of items that may be interesting to you if you are a believer in Jesus. In other words, you love Jesus. And you also put yourself in the queer community. When I say queer, I mean the LGBTQIA plus community, otherwise known as LGBT or LGBTQ. If you're questioning, if you are looking and searching, um, some of the things that I may cover uh, in some of these videos may be of benefit to you. So um, I'm going to begin. Today I'm looking at the word offense, the whole concept of being offended uh, so much of the time. We go through life being offended by someone's remarks, someone's tactics, someone's way in which they present things. And we really can uh, develop a, a mindset where we just choose to be offended. Choose to be offended by someone from a religious community or a particular denomination or a particular viewpoint or someone of a different race that we're not comfortable with and we don't know how to interact with it. Um, we can become offended by smells, um, certain nationalities, uh, certain cultures have smells associated with them, which are powerful in their culture, and we're not adapted to them, we're not accustomed to them. To them. And so uh, we can be offended by that. Some cultures like to touch, some cultures don't, and we can become offended by that as well. Um, we're all different. Um, there really isn't any one right way in which we conduct ourselves, uh, one right way to behave and to interact with others. And so the whole point here is, is realizing where we are when it comes to being offended. Uh, so much of the time, uh, we can be offended because that's the way we've been brought up. We've been raised to believe that a certain something may be offensive to our families or to our, uh, our cultures, going back to that. The point here is um, to be aware of our offenses, uh, to be aware of of, of, of what's going on in our own heart, in our own mind. And so ultimately, uh, it's our choice. And I'm going to say that probably a few times throughout the course of this, but it, it truly is up to us whether we want, whether we choose to be offended or not. Now, it may happen at a subconscious level, and most of the time it may. Um, but it doesn't have to stay there. Uh, we ultimately have free will. We ultimately get to choose what offends us and what does not. And again, it's a choice. We're all human. We all come from the same stuff. Um, whether you believe in, in uh, evolution or whether you believe in creation, uh, bottom line, we're all made of the same stuff. We're human. We have feelings. We have emotions. We may have been socialized to interact with those differently, but ultimately, we all come from the same stuff. So, being offended is up to us. It's our choice whether we choose to be offended or not. Hard words, perhaps. I get it. I understand. 
But we get to choose, and you might say, yeah, but you don't know my circumstances, or you don't know um, what happened to me. I can assure you that some of the stuff that I've been through, that I, I, I think I can probably identify with some of your path, with some of your travels, with some of your journeys. And I, I think I can, I can make the leap. I think I can conceptualize. I think I can understand uh, some of the things uh, that you've been through because many of those things I've been through myself. And for me, I have to count it as a good thing. And that refers back to another uh, video that I've done on meaning. But again, my purpose here is to focus on our, our, um, our ability to choose what offends us, which may seem a bit unorthodox. But um, we can see ourselves as a victim. Uh, people have, that have done mean things to us, mean-spirited things on purpose. They've, they've bullied us, whether... Uh, typical with men, they, they intimidate or they, they bully uh, by physical strength and physical intimidation um, as a show of strength. It may be for the benefit of them choosing to be superior, wanting us to know they're superior creatures to us, um, or uh, some insecurity they may be um, in, having in their own life. And so... Um, Quite frequently, men will dominate, men will bully, um, and we can be victim to that, victim of that. Uh, women don't generally physically intimidate or physically um, victimize, but they can do it, and it happens frequently in a setting of verbalization. It's quite just happens with women when they when when we get offended to vent on um, what what took place how we were mistreated and and so we we are dealing with our emotions and we work through those emotions and we do it many times through the form of venting through the form of gossiping um, talking about someone who's mistreated us we see ourselves as victimized and indeed, we are victim to other people's considerations or the lack thereof. Um, sometimes it's by accident. They, know any, they don't know any better. They're unaware. And sometimes these offenses come uh, because we're looking to be offended. We want to be offended because we've grown comfortable with being offended. And so it's easier to go through life being a victim. I was a victim of this. I was a victim of rape. I was a victim of assault. I was a victim of somebody else's indiscretion. I was a victim of somebody getting me drunk or getting me loaded or overdosing me on some medication or drug and I ended up in the hospital or somebody hit me in a vehicle or there was some accident, some physical accident uh, where there was no intention and we were victimized by that and we see ourselves as victims of careless actions of others if they'd only known better or they did know better and they did it anyway. And so we become offended by someone else, um, by someone else's smell or the sound of their voice or their look or the way they talk or the way they, they say things can cause us to have these knee-jerk reactions. And so we become offended, offended at someone else. What's interesting about being offended, and I find this ironic, is the fact that so many times the things that we see in someone else that offends us is actually our own personality. It's actually things that we ourselves are doing um, in our own lives. And so 
Uh, the reason it, it sticks out to us is because unconsciously uh, we're aware of it and we just do it. Um, we do it. It's, it's us. And when we see it in others, uh, we don't approve of it. So interestingly enough, the people that I clash with the most tend to be people who have an alpha personality as I do. Um, the people I clash with uh, can um, very much have uh, similar personality conflicts and I just don't like them and I'm offended by them. Uh, but again, I get to choose. And sometimes it's humbling, sometimes it um, doesn't show me in the best light. Uh, I make a lot of mistakes. Uh, I, I'm human. Um, and I revel in that humanity because I am what I am. And it's not a curse. It's not a bad thing to be human. Um, and I realize that I make a lot of mistakes along the way. I, I hurt people. Most of the time when I hurt people or I offend people, it's on accident most of the time. But I know how to offend people. I'm actually quite good at it. And, uh, and sometimes I do it on purpose. Um, and, and, and sometimes I've considered uh, how I might want to go about uh, offending or pricking or probing uh, someone um, just to see where their buttons are. And, uh, and that's just kind of my personality. So um, it's the way I am. Uh, so we can choose. We can choose to be a victim. We can choose to be offended. It's, it's our choice. Um, hard words, you may not accept that. Um, but ultimately, um, we, we need to become aware of being offended and we need to be aware of the response. So being aware of the stimulus in psych terms uh, and being aware of our response. Again, stimulus, response, psychology terms. I'm not going to go into rhetorical terms, but um, there is that, that stimulus, something that irritates us, and there is that, that response mechanism. Most of the time it's on auto drive. We don't even think about it. We just immediately react to it. And what I'm asking you to do is rather than just react, to be aware of it and to respond. You may not respond perhaps in the best way. Uh, you may screw it up. It's fine. We all screw up. It's part of the, part of the travel, part of the journey. And uh, it's it's okay, um, but uh, it's it's important for us to know that if our response was was incorrect, that at some point it's good for us to make amends with the individual that we responded to, reacted to, um, perhaps the way we shouldn't have. Um, I think we're all in one sense, in one form, uh, guilty of that. We need to give ourselves some break, a break, give ourselves some space, um, allow ourselves to be human, to be vulnerable, to be transparent, and realize we're, we're not perfect creatures. We would like to be, uh, but we're, we're not, and that's the way it is. So if an individual chooses not to be offended, they choose to take a comment, take um, a particular stimulus, and, and rather than react to it, rather than respond to it, just choose to, to make a note of it. At that point, we're making progress because we're no longer allowing our world to be dictated by 
trashy comments, by things that other people do. And if we can become aware of it first, um, we can begin to move beyond being victimized, to move beyond um, an attitude of bitterness and revenge and getting back at others and being mean-spirited. Uh, we can get beyond being menial and little and petty. Um, because if we can choose to, to excuse being offended, if we can get beyond it, then we're, we're able to, to live according to our own thoughts and the things that we believe in. And that is a victory in and of itself because we're not, we're not living in shame or in guilt or in somebody else's path or in somebody else's wake or in, in a, a situation where we were abused. And so we, we continue to abuse because it happened to us and we were offended by it and we became victims by it and we turn around and we do the same things. We just get offended. And rather than launch out and say something, uh, I encourage you to, to not be offended, to take that moment and, uh, and, and pass on the opportunity to get offended. I encourage you to get beyond um, being stuck, being caught in a rut, and to be aware of what's, what's motivating you and what is working in your life. I wish you the best, and I pray for you. I, I, I truly do. I, um, I hope your future, your present, includes Christ, his love, his acceptance, his ability. I hope that your journey uh, is with him and, and doesn't exclude uh, him. Uh, his people are not always uh, the most welcoming, um, but he is uh, because he's a lover, a lover of people. If you're, if you're a believer in Jesus, a believer in Christ, I encourage you in your journey, and I hope that this content um, helps you in your journey. If you identify as queer or LGBT, I hope this encourages you as well. Jesus loves you. He does. Um, accept yourself for who you are because he does. He washes away all the sin. He takes care of that. He's already taking care of that. So this is not a sermon about receiving Jesus, even though I encourage you to do so if you haven't, uh, because he's a friend. He's someone that can help. And uh, he's someone that can help us on our journey when we don't know what the hell is going on in our lives. So I encourage you to accept your humanity who you are as an individual. And I will pray for you. And I encourage you to, to continue to move forward and not be um, dismayed, not to be downcast, not to uh, get caught uh, in doing the same loops and the same routines. So God bless you. Um, you are in my prayers. And I wish you the very best on your journey with Christ.